what's poppin'? And in this video, I'm gonna talk about all about speed ramping. I'm gonna tell you how you do it, what proper settings you need, and all it is is going from fast to slow or slow to fast motion, all within your camera. Doesn't matter if you're using a Nikon D5200, a Z50, a Z5, a Canon, or Sony. As long as you're shooting above a certain frame rate, I'm gonna tell you exactly in this video how you speed wrap so your videos look a little bit more cooler. So what exactly is speed wrapping? Speed wrapping is exactly what it sounds, right? Pretty self-explanatory. You're taking a speed and you're wrapping it up or you're wrapping it down. And the basic concept of speed wrapping is assuming that you are editing in a 24 frames per second timeline, anything that you film above 24 frames per second, yes, you can speed ramp with 30 frames per second if you're filming, is that anything you're filming above 24, you can slow it down. As long as you slow it down or speed it up, it gives you the ability to speed ramp. And the most common use of speed ramp is, let's say someone's walking, they're walking a little too slow, you can speed ramp it up and then you can slow it down to make it more cinematic. Or you can do the other way, you can slow it down and speed it up, and then slow it down. You can also see this in sports. Let's say, for example, I'm Canadian. What up to all my fellow Canadians out there is that you have someone playing hockey, right? They take a shot, slow motion, right? As they're about to uh, wind up, and as they're about to uh, shoot the puck, it stops right there, super slow motion, let's say in 400 frames per second, and speeds ramp back up to follow through on the shot. That is essentially speed ramping. So now I'm gonna tell you the exact settings and after that I'm gonna actually film it to show you that anyone can do it and I'll be even doing it on my Nikon right here, D5200 in 60 frames per second to show you guys exactly how you speed ramp. So uh, let's talk about the settings. I'm gonna do it with you guys right here is you wanna go into your menu, go into your shooting menu, your movie settings, and then you want to go into frame rate, frame size, and it should give you the ability to shoot in 60 frames per second. But as you can see on the Nikon D5200, one of its drawbacks, it only shoots in 720p. But for this case, we're gonna shoot in 720p, all right? So as you can see here, here are all your movie options. Go into your shooting menu and go into anything above 60 frames per second. The higher, the better. So I'm going to choose 60 frames here. You can do it also do it in uh, 30 frames as well. And then you want to get yourself a lens. It doesn't matter what lens. I'll be using the kit lens right here. <sighs> Haven't used this guy in a while. There you go. And the same principles applies for speed wrapping. So if you're filming at, let's say, 60 frames, you want your shutter to be double that. So I'm changing my shutter to uh, 1 over 120, right? And what happens when you film 1 over 120 is that most of the time is the quality doesn't get that good because you're essentially losing light. So you want to crank up your ISO to just a bit. And then when it comes to speed wrapping, there's a couple techniques that I can show you, right? But the easiest one that I'm going to do right now is you're going to go film, you're going to whip, whip your camera, right? And then zoom out like that. And that will give you a little speed ramp focusing the subject from, from this blurry object into this smooth pan out. I'm gonna show you right over there. Super easy. So right now I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm doing. I'm shooting at 1 over 125, 1250 ISO, and this is with a Nikon D5200. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna press record up here. I'm recording, and then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna whip it and then zoom back. And that will give me my super simple speed ramp effect. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Right here, three, two, one, and whip, and then go back. And then you'll also reverse that. You can also go forward, and then whip away. And that's how you get all those fancy, everyone's doing those type of transitions. But now you guys can do it too, so I'm gonna take that footage, put it into, uh, Premiere and show you guys exactly how you do that step by step. Right guys, so we are going to be doing this live. I'll be doing it with you. First thing what you want to do is go into your sequence here and find out your timeline. Technically I'm cheating a bit, but for this portion I'm going to assume that this is 1080p. So all I'm going to do now is you want to find your clip that you picked right here. And the biggest mistake that people do is they drag it into the timeline. First thing what you want to do is you right click, modify, interpret your footage and making sure that it is 
23.7, aka 23.76, aka 24 frames per second. So then now you see that I shot it in slow motion and I'll be slowing it down to 23 frames per second. So you just want to press OK. So now this clip will be in slow motion here, as you can see. Next is I want to find where I want to start this clip. So I, I whipped it about here. So I put my endpoint in, whipped it out, drag that out in slow motion. Looks about right. Put this into my timeline. I'm just going to set this to frame. And next, what you want to do is you want, you want to press shift and then plus. That will make all of your timeline clips bigger. You want to then show show clip, keyframe clips, go time remapping, and then you want to go into speed. Now, every time you press control and you click, that is where your time magic comes into play. So I want this to be fast, and then I want it to be slow here. So I'm going to click control there, and then I'm going to have that slowed all the way out. So you want to drag this out a bit and then zoom in a bit and then you'll there's this little toggle that you want to click into so this will make the you can essentially smoothen out so it's not as harsh so that's what I'm doing and as you can see I want to go drag this all the way up to let's say 600% and then it slows down into which should be 100% and if you want to make it a little bit more smoother I just right click it time interpretation and I go to frame blending and that is your little maybe it's too fast because I am filming it at a 60 frame so I'm just gonna do this at let's say 500%. So go there. Bam. That's your speed ramp. And a little hack if you want it to be like, oh, that's too slow. So what you do is cut there. You right click that speed duration. You speed that up by 200%. Ripple delete this. Now look what we have here. I have to render this, but it will create a faster keyframe. That's a little hack for y'all. But that itself is a little speed ramp. Did it with impromptu. And if you want to make this a little faster or a little bit smoother, I'm just going to nest it. I'm going to do my, uh, let's see, my pillow. And then I'm going to apply a warp stabilizer on this. So it's just a little bit more smoother. And that's a workaround of how you make a little bit smoother time ramping and I'm going to show a couple clips of me actually doing this with real footage but I just want to show you guys that yes you can do this with literally anything and everything and you don't need to have like you know go out and be fancy you can I did this with my Nikon D5200 all right speed ramping but all it is is you going from a fast motion to a slow motion right and that's how you do it in Adobe Premiere 2020 CC 2021 whatever your heart desires so now guys, you know exactly how to speed ramp or AKA turn slow motion to fast motion to slow again. And now you know the basics of speed ramping. It's pretty simple and I try not to do it. Once I learned it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this here and there. But for me, it gets a little too much overdone. It's always in moderation. And if you watch this far, make sure you grab my crash camera course where you literally can use any camera and I show you the best way to use it, even if you are a complete beginner with a Nikon D5200 like myself. My name is Peter. Make sure you grab all my freebies, everything I mentioned and the products I use in the description below. My name is Peter. You're watching Broke Bridging Collective where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Cheers, guys. And that was my stomach.